authors, entertainers to innovators. We connect with those who help shape our culture. Join us in revealing stories of their lives and backgrounds, their triumphs and tragedies that molded them into who they are today. Authentically off script and personally illuminating, this is Audibles with Jason Scarborough. This week on Audibles, Tanner Allen. So your story starts on June 5th, 1998 in Theodore, Alabama. So how would you describe your, your childhood growing up there in Theodore? Really laid back. Yeah. Uh, as far as I can remember, I've always hunted. I've always been a hunter and a fisherman. And where I grew up, that's kind of what the thing, or that's kind of my number one and number two hobbies was hunting and fishing at a young age. And then ironically, the first thing I picked up sports-wise was a golf club. Really? Yeah, so I actually was a left-handed golfer. I played golf probably two or three years before I picked up a baseball bat. Wow. So my, at the early stage of my, I guess you could say, athletic career, I was hunting, fishing, and playing golf. How about that? How would you describe the people of, of Theodore, Alabama when you were growing up there? Really quiet. Like I said, it's really laid back. Um, my days or my weekends were, were mainly spent, obviously during the week, was go to school, and then after that, come home, and I would chase robins in the backyard with a BB gun. You know what I mean? Just, just stuff like that. But I was able to do that in that town. So it was – it was really neat. I'd always go to my, you know, my mom's parents' house, my gammy and my papa, and we would go squirrel hunting, dove hunting. Then I'd go to my dad's parents' house, my mimi and papa, and we'd we'd go fishing or we we'd go to the hunt camp and, and chase deer and hogs. So it was always being in the outdoors and um, enjoying nature, stuff like that. So big outdoorsman, love sports. Was there something not involving sports that you wanted to be when you grew up that maybe would, would surprise us? Not really, man. It was always. I can remember coming home after school and I would do my homework and watch the Braves play and I would see Chipper Jones on TV and like, man, I want to do that one day. I want to do what that guy does. It's pretty cool. So I was a huge Chipper Jones fan. Still am today. Kind of look like Chipper. <laughs> I've been told that my whole life. So when I was playing like park league ball or even travel ball, everybody would call me Chipper. So uh, that, was pretty, that was pretty cool. So baseball for you was on the radar pretty young. Do you remember how young really? you were? So I, I probably picked up a baseball bat three or four years old. Really? And uh, I used to love to hit things. So I'd go out in the yard and uh, the neighborhood that we moved into, we were like the first house that was built into it, right? So there was a bunch of like lots that had been cleared, but there was a lot of gravel. And I would actually take like a broomstick and go out in the yard and throw rocks up to myself and hit them with a broomstick wow. for hours and hours at a time. I just thought it was so cool because there was like a little black fence back there that would kind of like marked property lines. And I was like, imagine it was a fence and I tried to hit the rocks over that fence as a home run and stuff. And I would impress, impersonate all the players, all my favorite players. So it was something that started out when I was really, really young. So you attend UMS Wright Prep School there in, in Mobile. How would you describe Tanner Allen in high school? Oh, I, I thought I was cool in high school because I, I was QB1 for three years, right? So anybody that's played quarterback in high school, they'll tell you. You get out and you look back and like, man, what a loser. <laughs> you know what I mean? I thought I was so cool just because I was quarterback in high school. That's nothing. You know what I mean? But at the time, I thought I was the coolest person in Mobile. Now, you won two state championships, too, while you were in high school. And junior, baseball. Baseball championships, uh, junior and senior season. So, how would you describe that ride, winning, winning two championships? That was really neat. So, my, my high school baseball career actually started when I was in eighth grade. I got pulled up. And uh, we were really good every single year. But when you win a state championship, a lot of things have to go, have to fall your way. In my freshman and sophomore year, we were really good. We just didn't have the right luck. And we just, you know, a bloop would fall in, you know, that wasn't supposed to fall in and we'd lose the game. That's how we got beat out of the playoffs. Anyways, but my last two years, my junior, or my junior and my senior year, we were good, but we were really gritty. Kind of like the team we were in 21 here at Mississippi State, really gritty. It was like, we wanted to be, wanted to be behind late in the game. Because we'd always have you, you know, a little drama in the game to come back and then uh, win the game. But, but yeah, man, that's kind of where I learned how to, how that's kind of where I was molded into the player. I kind of was at Mississippi State. It's been a little, little, uh, a little chip on my shoulder and a little gritty. So after a decorated high school career, what what expectations coming out of high school, playing in college professionally? What expectations did you have coming out of high school? I wanted to go to college right out of high school. I could have played. I could have got drafted higher, 
But I kind of told everybody I really want to go to college. And uh, I was actually committed to LSU until my last day of uh, my senior year where I could sign. So it was like I was signing the next day with LSU. And I uh, got a phone call that said Coach Canizero, who had recruited me the hardest out of anybody in the SEC. I, I've talked to everybody. Everybody was interested, right? But he was the one that told me, he said, look, you'll play from day one. And he called me, and he talked, uh, and he told me, he said, look, the deal is still going to be the same at Mississippi State. You come to Mississippi State, I'm going to give you the opportunity to play from day one. So I'm like, that's where I'm going. Decommitted. Next day, I had a lot of maroon and white out there signed to Mississippi State. How early did they start showing up on the radar then? So you said he started – he was recruiting you pretty hard, so I am curious. After my freshman year uh, in high school, I started getting a lot of a lot of recognition. First person to ever offer me was a South Alabama coach, Calvi. Man, awesome program. Huge program. I was this close to going to South Alabama. And uh, my mom was like, no, we're making a decision too quick because I think my dad wanted me to stay in town. And I was fine with staying in town, too. I love South Alabama. They were, like I said, I love Coach Calvi. He does an outstanding job with those guys. They're good every single year, right? So then my mom was like, no, nah, let's just see what happens. And then two weeks later, it's like everybody in the SEC was calling me. I was like, wow, this is about to happen. You know what I mean? So it was, it was pretty cool. It was pretty cool. I tell people sometimes, I remember uh, a kid once told me in high school when I committed to LSU, he said, uh, the only thing you're going to do at LSU is clean cleats. Whoa. And that kind of stuck with me a little bit. Because I had some people in my high school that wanted to go play baseball as well, and I was kind of the only one that was getting a little attention about playing big-time baseball. Mm-hmm. And uh, that kind of put a little fire under me. You know, this guy thinks I'm going to go somewhere to play baseball just to clean cleats. So I kind of kept that, that one in my back pocket as well. Kept that oh. chip on your shoulder. Yeah, I always have receipts and stuff people, people say about me. <laughs> Not really, yeah, not really to go back at them, just kind of to motivate me, you know what I mean? Find those little pockets of fuel. Exactly, so exactly. Yeah. If you talk to any athlete, they all they got something that fuels them, and that was me. Having somebody tell me they think I'm going to clean cleats at the next level, that kind of, if that don't make you mad, nothing will. Was that the clincher for you to go to Mississippi State, other than uh, Coach Canizero recruiting you hard? Was that the clincher for you to go to Mississippi State? Say, I'll go somewhere else and I'll – I wanted to go where I was going to play. Yeah. And uh, that really was because, like, Coach Canizero, don't, don't get me wrong, Coach Cohen, outstanding. Love him. But I was really getting the feeling from Coach Canizero that this guy likes me a lot. He's going, he wants me to play, right? Ironically, when I got here, I'm like, dude, I love this town. You know what I mean? This is like Mayberry off the Andy Griffith show. <laughs> I grew up watching it as a kid all the time as well. Hunting and fishing. I'm like, man, I could have went to LSU. It'd have been a different. It'd have been a different environment, right? A little, little bit more city like. Start with laid back country. Go fishing and hunting all the time. Coach Lim used to get on me all the time. You rolling into practice in camouflage. <laughs> like, I'm sorry. You know what I mean? That's who I am. So your freshman season in 2018 was interesting for a variety of reasons. So Coach Canizero recruits you hard, but then he has to step down uh, due to some personal reasons. Uh, the legend of Coach Gary Henderson is born. He takes over uh, interim head coaching duties for the Bulldogs. And so for you to be a freshman, you've got all this going on, your very first season in Starville. How did you deal with all that personally? To be honest with you, our team was so close, it really didn't make a difference who was coaching us. And that's how it's got to be. That's why we were so scrappy that year, right? Everybody counted us out. But we were like the last three teams standing. We were one one away from playing for a national championship. That's how close we were. And to be honest with you, all the stuff going on outside of the game, coaching changes, not having a field to practice on, stuff like that, it really didn't matter. We were just like, let's get to the game and play. So that, that, was, that was something that, you know, my last three years at State, we were real gritty. Well, I learned it my freshman year, big time, because we were on our own. Not, not, not a knock against the coaching staff, but right. like they were being rotated around like crazy, right? So all we really had that was guaranteed was guy to your left and to your right. And, uh, Coach Gotro, Coach Mike Brown, I mean, Coach Hindu, man, those guys did an outstanding job with us. You know what I mean? It was outstanding. It, it was professional. And uh, they were the reason. They kind of got us lassoed in, you know what I mean, to, hey, guys, we can still, we're still Mississippi State. We're still supposed to be good at baseball. All this stuff's going on. It doesn't matter. we got to still keep going and competing, right? So uh, kudos to them for that. Don't go anywhere. Audible's returns in a moment here on the Spirit Media Network.
When you find a great community, you will find great health care. That is exactly what King's Daughters Medical Center provides. Keeping businesses moving with occupational wellness, heart healthy screenings, diabetes education and management, community education, and remote patient monitoring that promotes better care in between regular office visits. KDMC, caring for our community like no one else can. Wendy's without the Wendy's app is like a hamburger without the fresh beef. No! Get the app to order ahead, order delivery, earn free food, and get app exclusive offers. One app, all the Wendy's. We're going the extra mile, and we're taking you with us. We have a responsibility to get the work to the streets. Join us on the Extra Mile podcast as we travel Mississippi highways to bring you in-depth conversations with state leaders. Got to have the ability to get their product to market. Infrastructure stakeholders and Mississippi locals to give you a behind-the-scenes look at transportation throughout the state. Highways, um, movement of goods, these are things that we rely on every day. You can listen and watch episodes of the show by visiting gomdot.com forward slash the extra mile. So sweet, so crispy. Nobody makes breakfast as good as Wendy's new homestyle French toast sticks. Nobody. <clears throat> nope. Mm-hmm. Keep talking. I'm, I, should, I, I can't I, hear you. I'm, I should probably stop. Choose wisely. Choose Wendy's homestyle French toast sticks. For those on the go, we give you Audibles with Jason Scarborough, the podcast. What are we listening to? Are we listening to a playlist? Are we listening to a podcast? What a great question. Listen to our intimate interviews with guests on your favorite podcast platforms, including iTunes, Google Play, Amazon Music, Spotify, TuneIn Radio, and so many more. Do you ever look back and say, you know, my life, the story could have ended up differently had it not been for your grandparents? incredibly uh, different for sure. Plus you'll hear behind the scenes commentary on each guest, interview preparation, location, and so much more from Jason himself. Do you have a uh, a favorite Coach Bowden story Uh, that you can share with us? I can tell you this, what you see with Bobby Bowden is what you get. Mm. Check out Audibles with Jason Scarborough, the podcast, on any of these popular podcast locations and hit subscribe, download, and enjoy. Now, back to the show. Talk about being gritty, learning all that grit, learning, really, it sounds like the word that comes to my mind is perseverance that season, how, how much you had to persevere, your teammates had to persevere. You guys come oh so close, like you said, in 2018. It sucks to not be able to get to that final game and, and play for a national championship, but as a freshman, you gotta be thinking, okay, yeah, all yeah. right. It was a good experience. Like you said, you go through all that training in the fall, the year before, then all the training is spring training. And people don't realize how intense that stuff is. I mean, that's getting up at every day at 5.30, working out, just starting your day. I mean, it's. It's intense training, and you go through that together with your teammates, and that's how you create a bond. You're just like you're, you're both going through hell together. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? That, that's, in a weird way, that makes you bond together. Mm-hmm. And uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is going through all that stuff my freshman year, getting so close, and at the last second to get taken away from you, just like that. I mean, for the fans, it's a heartbreaker. No, imagine going through all that stuff with your, with your guys on your team and then seeing them leave because they're, they're done. The seniors are gone, right? and not be able to accomplish what we had practiced for all the year before and the springtime to achieve and just falling that and being that close to playing for it and, and falling, man. That was that was that was a gut punch. But also in a way, motivation for the next year. It's so ironic to, to sit here with you and hear that now about all the transition, all the change that went on and how hearing you talk about it now in your freshman season, so you fast forward. You guys go to Omaha with Coach Henderson, and then there's another change going into your sophomore year. A guy named Chris Lamonis comes in. So you've got all this change coming in around you. 
Um, how would you describe how you felt going into your sophomore season? So, I'm just going to be honest with you, man. When we had the meeting about a new coach, it kind of made me mad. Really? Because, I mean, Coach Henderson rode through all that junk with us, right? Did his best to get us to where we were. We got this close, right? I thought he deserved another chance. I really did. I thought he deserved opportunity. But that was a little bit above, that decision was above my pay grade, right? <laughs> so, so it, like I said, at first I was kind of aggravated. I'm like, who is this guy, man? He didn't, he didn't go through anything. Look what we just did last year, right? And then get to know Coach Lim. I'm like, this guy's got it going on. Mm -hmm. He's, he's going to be good. I like, I like, Coach Limonis is a player's coach. I mean that in, in a way of if you take care of your business, you're going to love playing for him. Now, if you want to jack around and not take care of your business, you're probably going to transfer. And taking care of business, I mean, go to class, be on time, work hard, don't cause any problems off, off, you know, off the field. You do those four things, you, you'll love Coach Limonis. That's crazy to hear you talk. Uh, not crazy, but it's kind of interesting to hear you say that about off the field, because during his tenure here in Starville, I can't remember of any of you guys getting in any kind of, I mean, stuff's gonna happen, but I, I can't remember anything happening like that. So I'll ask you, since we're talking about Coach Lamonis, do you remember your first interaction with, with Coach Lamonis? When we had the meeting, uh, I do remember, uh, he, it was him and Coach Cheese, and Coach Cheese was like, I wear number five. I'm like, I'm an All-American, sorry. <laughs> Whoa. It was kind of funny because then Coach Gotro started laughing. He was like, yeah, that guy was pretty good last year. So I wear number five. That's when we gave Cheese zero. We called him. You know, where I'm from, zero, zero is double off buckshot. So yeah. we kind of call Coach Cheese all like zero, right? Kind of me and Brad Cummins thing. It was just, you got to understand, man, that family over there, that, and that real tight family that nobody gets to see is so tight and so awesome together, man. We get along with those guys. It's, it's the tightest team I've ever been a part of and the group of guys. Those guys over there, Coach Goat, Coach Cheese, Coach Lamonis, Coach Foxhall, man, they, they know what they're doing. They're doing an outstanding job. Clearly last year didn't go the way we wanted it to. But just like anything, you learn from your failure. And uh, from what I've seen this year, they, they've reloaded really well. You had to be pretty confident going into that 2019 season with the kind of year that you had as a freshman. Like you said, you guys were that close in Omaha. So rolling into 2019, new coach, you get to know Coach Lamonis a little bit. How confident were you going into 2019? Very confident. We had Ethan Small coming back, JT Ginn. I mean, that's a one-two punch right there. That's probably the best in the country. So we know our pitching's good. We got Jake Mangum coming back. Elijah McNamee. I mean, we got a lot of guys coming. We knew we were going to be good. It was a different – my freshman year, I kind of didn't know what I was getting into, right? Mm -hmm. My sophomore year, I'm like, we know what's got to be done to do it. We were, we were like foaming at the mouth to get to this season. We knew we were that good. I'd say the 2019's team was the best team I was a part of. Really? By far. We were unbelievably talented. Experience, veterans, new guys that learned how to play. Me, Rowdy, Justin Foskey, Jordan Westberg, Josh Hatcher, I mean – we were loaded that year. But then again, at the end of the year, if you don't have the ball falling a certain way, you're just not gonna, you're not gonna win, win at all. And that's kind of what happened. It was a remarkable season. And I've heard Coach Lamonis, and he's, he's told me this, that he was really nervous taking over, because of his history with Mississippi State, his parents and, and everything, and just taking over, you're taking over one of the great programs in collegiate baseball. And he talked about being nervous. It didn't show because I'll read this all for you guys. He set a new record for wins for a first-year SEC head coach, only the third SEC head baseball coach to advance to the College World Series in his first season. So you guys are going back to Omaha, new head coach, no problem. So what was it about Coach Lamonis with this? You talked about the roster you guys had. What was it that allowed you guys to make such sweet music on the diamond? Coach Lamonis didn't get in the way. Hmm as in a way of he likes to run practice a certain way, right? He, he didn't really change much. We had the experience. We knew what we were doing. And that was 100% all on him. Like, that was outstanding. I mean, why, as, a, as a new coach, why would you come into a program that just went to Omaha's got its team coming back? Why would you get in and try to change so much stuff around? And that is why he is so good. He's got so much feel. He's like, like clearly, we needed to make practice skills to do all that stuff. Like he, he, ran, he did an outstanding job running practice and getting us ready to play. But at the end of the day, I guess you could say 
he didn't have a chain around our necks. We got to play it a certain way. He cut the chain off and said, go play. You've done it. And that's what we need more of. Man, I mean, I can't tell you how much that made a difference on us. It was like, wow, this guy, I mean, he's telling us, you guys went last year, go do it again. Yeah. I'm here just to get you organized and get you ready to play, right? Mm -hmm. And make a lineup card out and, and, and manage a game. Like, that was 100% why we were so good. And, and him doing that was, was the difference in our year. So you guys face a familiar foe pretty much right out of the gate when you get, went back to Omaha in 2019. You beat Auburn, then you face Vandy. That game's postponed due to weather. The Commodores get you 6-3. to three. <clears throat> And then you have to face off against Coach Lamonis' best friend, former teammate, head coach Dan McDonald in Louisville. And the cars get you guys 4-3 to three to send you home. So here you are close again, sophomore season, I mean, I know most athletes look back and like, hey, if you get to go to, to Omaha at all, uh, it's a blessing. But I'm curious for, from your vantage point, what were you feeling? You got to be thinking, are you serious? Here we go again. Yeah, I, it was kind of the mindset of, I remember the walk off. I mean, I kind of just went down on my knees at first base. I was like, we got to do this all over again next year. It's going to be a lot of work. You know what I mean? That's the same thing. Nothing, the thought to my mind that was like, man, that was our only chance to get it done. No, that never came to my mind. My mind instantly went to, we know what we got to do. We got to do it again, get back next year, and play better in the tournament. Because there was never a doubt that we were going back again. Like, bet uh, between the coaches and the team, like, we knew we were going back again. Mm -hmm. Like, we've been twice, we're going three times. You know, if some guys are like, there's no way we do it three times. We're like, yeah, why not? We know what it takes to get there. You know what I mean? It was kind of like, get on, get on the wagon, let's go. Yeah. So, man. Losing to Coach McDonald, though, in that game, it, it was heartbreaking because, like I said, we were the we were that was the best team I was a part of, mm -hmm. I've ever been a part of in my life. And so close again. Then you come back in 2020, and 16 games deep into the season, the pandemic hits. You guys are rolling again, confident you're going to go back to Omaha yet again. COVID hits, shuts the season down, only 16 games deep into the season. So here you are again, all this change in your first two seasons, all this up and down. Now you have a season that's shut down. So how frustrating was that for you and your teammates? Man, it was aggravating. For me especially, I broke my hand at, uh, at Long Beach State University on a Sunday. And when I got back to Starkville, the x-ray yes yeah, broke and I got my options. They were like, if you, um, if you get surgery, you'll be able to play against Kentucky in three weeks. So I'm like, all right, let's go ahead and do surgery. So I did surgery that day. Or well, the next day, got done, and like three or four days later, we go to Biloxi, right? Beat Texas Tech two out of the two. We're rolling, and we're feeling good. And like on the way home, the season's over. And I got stitches in my hand for no reason because I could have easily avoided surgery. But, man, it was a gut punch because, like you said, we were really good. And then uh, we were really good that year, too. We had me, Rowdy, Justin Fossey, Jordan Westberg, Josh Hatcher. I mean, that's – Five right there, it was pretty solid. Especially, and, and the new guys were coming in, they were just learning. That's when we discovered Landon. Landon was really good. LT was really good. So we had some help too. We we, we would definitely went back to Omaha that year. I, I'm telling you, you could have penciled us in. There's no way we wouldn't have made it. Um, but the, the COVID hit, Coach Lamonis has a meeting and kind of kind of puts in the, kind of says, I don't know what to tell you guys, you're, you're free to go or whatever. So me and Brad Cumbus jump in the truck, head straight to uh, Dolphin Island, right? Going to head south, we're going to the beach. <laughs> south, the south down there, we didn't shut down anything. We were wide open, so that's where we're going. You know what I mean? And he, Coach Lamonis calls us like two hours down the road, like, where are you guys at? I'm like, Coach, what do you mean? You told us we can go home. Well, what if something changes? I need you in town. I meant you to go home in town, not go all the way back to, to Hurley, Mississippi or Dolphin Island. Come on back. And then we're like, you sure about that? Yeah. So we turn around. He calls us back 30 minutes. You know what? It's probably not going to – don't worry about it. Just go on home. <laughs> Just keep your phone on you. So we went home. <laughs> we went home. COVID's got everything, you know, all the sports shut down, everything up north, and then, like, slowly, slowly working its way down, starting to shut down, and, and I'm, I'm offshore fishing every single day. Gas is $1.60 back home. So I'm like, I guess all I can do is go offshore fishing. So we did it all summer long. Never had, never, I mean, that was the best place to quarantine, yeah. 60 miles offshore. Yeah. You know what I mean? Don't go anywhere. Audible's returns in a moment here on the Spirit Media Network. 
we believe patient-centered care is where it all begins. That's why King's Daughters Medical Center ranks nationally in patient care and safety. Our staff's commitment to better health care means a higher quality of life for so many. We are one team, one heartbeat, one mission to provide this community with the high quality health care. KDMC, caring for our community like no one else can. Family owned and operated since 1986, Lakeside Molding has become the trusted source of architectural products throughout the South. They offer fine interior architectural moldings, custom millwork, and cabinet doors designed and handcrafted in Flowood. Their showroom on Lakeland Drive is stocked with today's most sought after interior details, including corbels, posts, fireplace mantles, bath vanities, mirrors, and much more. Tim Shoemaker and his staff work closely to meet client needs for new construction, restoration, and remodeling projects. Lakeside Molding, where details make the difference. Wendy's without the Wendy's app is like a hamburger without the fresh beef. No! Get the app to order ahead, order delivery, earn free food, and get app exclusive offers. One app, all the Wendy's. We're going the extra mile, and we're taking you with us. We have a responsibility to get the work to the streets. Join us on the Extra Mile podcast as we travel Mississippi highways to bring you in-depth conversations with state leaders. Gotta have the ability to get their product to market. Infrastructure stakeholders and Mississippi locals to give you a behind the scenes look at transportation throughout the state. Highways, um, movement of goods, these are things that we rely on every day. You can listen and watch episodes of the show by visiting gomdot.com forward slash the extra mile. So sweet, so crispy. Nobody makes breakfast as good as Wendy's new homestyle French toast sticks. Nobody. <clears throat> nope. Mm-hmm. Keep talking. I'm, I, should, I, I can't I, hear you. I'm, I should probably stop. Choose wisely. Choose Wendy's homestyle French toast sticks. For those on the go, we give you Audibles with Jason Scarborough, the podcast. What are we listening to? Are we listening to a playlist? Are we listening to a podcast? What a great question. Listen to our intimate interviews with guests on your favorite podcast platforms, including iTunes, Google Play, Amazon Music, Spotify, TuneIn Radio, and so many more. Do you ever look back and say, you know, my life, the story could have ended up differently had it not been for your grandparents? incredibly uh, different for sure. Plus you'll hear behind the scenes commentary on each guest, interview preparation location and so much more from Jason himself. Do you have a uh, a favorite Coach Bowden story Uh, that you can share with us? I can tell you this, what you see with Bobby Bowden is what you get. Mm. Check out Audibles with Jason Scarborough, the podcast on any of these popular podcast locations and hit subscribe download and enjoy. Now, back to the show. Yeah, yeah. I was going to ask what you guys did to burn time and how you prepared going into 2021. Now I know. Yeah, it was, man, <laughs> it was a whole lot of, so deer season's clearly not in in the summertime. Mm-hmm. So in the summertime, I chase uh, hogs a lot. I like shooting hogs, man. They're fun. They're fun for me to hunt. I like shooting them with my bow. And, with my bow. and there's a lot back home. And then, like I said, if it was a slick day, if the wind was blowing, I'm not too, I'm not a big fan of easing offshore when it's rough. That's no fun getting your brains beat out. But if it was slick, you know, we were going. So we did a lot of that stuff, a lot of hunting and fishing, which I mean, half of America was inside their house. And I'm like, man, that, that's no fun. I'm mm-hmm. out in the sunlight. I mean, COVID doesn't like sunlight, salt water. You know what I mean? So that, that was fun. So I'm sitting here thinking, like, if you ever wanted to, like charge people to be able to go on hunting expeditions with you, you, you could probably make a lot of money. Man, yeah, for yeah. sure. I could probably, I'd love, I take people sometimes all the time. And, and the coolest thing for me is I take guys that have never been duck hunting. Oh. And they're like, man, let's go try these ducks. And then you do it. And when the ducks do it right, they're like, they're hooked. It's the coolest thing ever. But if the ducks don't do it right, you don't have to worry about that person not coming, coming back wanting to go hunting again. See, I've been on the fence about getting back into duck hunting. I think Tanner just talked me into it, you know. I mean, I just got a chocolate lab, right? So oh, you got to the work of the dogs have to fun too. Got to take up duck hunting now, right? So, yeah. got to get back into it. Yeah. So, you get back into 2021, your buddy Rowdy Jordan, you're back. You guys come back. Was there ever anything, of course you had several others that came back too. But was there ever anything in the preseason camps working out where you kind of looked around and you're like, "You know what?" Not only could we get back to Omaha, we could win this dang thing. 
for sure. That was that was the mind. As a Mississippi State baseball player, your mindset is never, I hope we can make it to Omaha this year. It's like, we're going. Let's just figure out who's going with us. You know what I mean? Which, I mean, I, kinda, I feel like they kind of got the, got away from that mindset last year. Mm. Which is weird because when I was a freshman, I learned from Hunter Stovall, Jake Mangum, Elijah McNamee, how they did things, right? And it worked pretty good for them. Sophomore year, I like – Still keep an eye on Jake, how he's doing it. Eat the small, those guys. I mean, these guys are good, right? I want to be just like them. Junior year, it's my turn. We got all the guys. I'm showing all the guys the ways of Mississippi State baseball, what we do, how we get ready. The the next year, same thing, right? Me and Rowdy. Uh, me, Rowdy, Josh Hatcher, Riley Self, Spencer Price. I mean, we're the older guys. We kind of show to get the group how we're passing the torch down to the next group of guys. But it's like last year, they really didn't learn anything about how we went about doing things. You know what I mean? Because I didn't know what to, I didn't know what to expect my freshman year coming into Mississippi State. Jake Mangum showed me. Hunter Stovall showed me this is how we do it around here. And uh, I just feel like I guess they took it for granted or they thought we won a national championship. We knew how to do it the right way. That's interesting to hear that because because uh, what I'm hearing is like you're you're taking leadership classes from the guys before you basically exactly. watching them how they do it, and you're hopeful that the guys that come behind you won't take it for granted, like you said, because you're at Mississippi State. Like you said, you expect to be in Omaha every, every single season. So it's almost like here you're hopeful that the guys take those lessons from you, from Rowdy, from Bednar, from from Sims, all these other guys that have come through, that won a national championship. Yeah. So you're hoping that they would take those lessons from you guys and carry them, carry them on. Uh, I guess you could say – my last year at State, or my junior year, it's like the first game without Jake Mangum or Elijah McNamee coming through the door. Mm -hmm. You're like, wow, this is this is on us. It's like <laughs> it's time to grow up right now. You know what I mean? We used to be able to hide behind them, but now the spotlight's on us, and uh, you got to be ready to take on that role. Well, that 2021 season, I mean, it it had its shares uh, its share of ups and downs. You win 20 conference games, then towards the end of the season, you know, the Missouri series, people were shocked at that. You had fans jumping off the train. SEC tournament rolls around, and folks are like, fans particularly, are starting to jump off the train. Do you tune that stuff out? Yeah, 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 man. It's let's just be honest here. You're gonna see it because people yeah. tag you on Twitter. I mean, you're gonna see it. Yeah. Now, the way you deal with it is you just become tighter as a team. Mm -hmm. Say, I don't care what anybody thinks outside of us outside of this program. I care what Coach Gutro thinks about me. I care what Landon Sims thinks about me. That's what you. That's what you do. If you if you were you know basing if you cared what everybody thought about you outside the program, man, you'd be <laughs> like a dog chasing your tail, right, in a circle. So you just get tight together and you really just focus on each other, and that's kind of what we did. We see all that mess. That's for me. It's the most. It's the biggest act of a coward I've ever seen in my life. You're gonna attack a 18 year old kid through social media knowing he cannot say anything back because if he does it's his fault he'll be the one on he'll be the one talked about so if you do that man if i see people do that it infuriates now that i'm not a part of mississippi state anymore i just go i just mow them down i'm like come on man i really don't care if you want to come at somebody you can come at me i know how to handle it i've handled it my whole life you know what i mean so it's funny after we won the national championship i posted just a few you know just a few receipts of things i had you know what i mean and some folks were mad about it. I'm like, well, let's put it like this. I listened to all your bull crap all year long and never said one word about it. I kept my mouth shut, and I did my best to lead us the whole year. We won a national championship. You think I haven't earned the right to say something? I remember what you said when we were down in the dirt. So you know what I mean? That's what I could say to somebody. I kept my mouth shut when I was supposed to keep it shut. Yeah, I followed you on social media. You were – Pretty laid back, pretty tame, and I have to. I mean, you guys are essentially, in a lot of ways, playing at a school like Mississippi State, playing baseball at Mississippi State. You're public figures yeah. in a lot of ways, and so, like you said, you can't. There's a lot of times you can't say something back. You want to, but you can't. You never can. Always, yeah. you know, you you've never or I've never regretted not saying something. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Now, have I regretted running my mouth a couple times? Of course, <laughs> but. We're, we're, everybody's human. You always make mistakes. You learn from them. But mm -hmm. for me, it was a part, like I said, I kept my mouth shut all year long. I listened to all the bull crap. We went out and won a national championship. 
and I see the same person that wanted to run his mouth when we got beat by Missouri, now praising us, man, that didn't sit right with me. Now to the, all the fans that were on the train and supported us no matter what, I could give them a kiss on the cheek, you know what yeah. I mean? Because they, they, they are Mississippi State baseball. Yeah. They are bought in. They are true fans, man. That is the roots of our baseball program is those fans right there, ride or die. And, man, to be able to win a national championship for those fans, that, that's priceless. That is priceless. Well, that, that trip to the national championship, the road to get there started with the Startville Regional. I mean, you guys just mowed, mowed through that. Then you get up against a tough Notre Dame team. If I remember right, it comes to a third game. You guys basically just, I think it was like 11 or 12 runs in that game. Clinching your third straight trip to the College World Series. So here you are making your third straight trip to the College World Series. Can't really count the COVID year, but third straight trip to the College World Series for guys like you and Rowdy and Landon and Bedna. I mean, pretty rewarding, I would think. It was. It was. Me and Rowdy, me and Rowdy, so after we won, not going to lie to you, we had a huge celebration that night. The next day, me and Rowdy lived together my last year. And uh, we were, we kind of woke up the next day and we're like, well, this is no shock. We're going back. Mm -hmm. Everybody else is kind of, oh, we're going to Omaha first time. We've been there two times. Right. They say, this isn't, hey, God, we made it here. Hopefully we win. We're like, what can we do to win this thing? Mm -hmm. We're going back for a third time. You know what I mean? So it was kind of the attitude of we're supposed to be here. Mm -hmm. Let's act like it. For you, it was kind of old hat at this point, yeah. right? It's like uh, coming back to see an old friend. <laughs> Don't go anywhere. Audible's returns in a moment here on the Spirit Media Network. Quality of life is about lifelong care. Your family's health care is important to you, and that's important to us. King's Daughters Medical Center is here for your family in every stage of life, from the excited new parents, adolescent and teen years, to the big day. Walking alongside of you in life's journey, living a healthier life. KDMC, caring for our community like no one else can. Wendy's without the Wendy's app is like a hamburger without the fresh beef. No! Get the app to order ahead, order delivery, earn free food, and get app exclusive offers. One app, all the Wendy's. So sweet, so crispy. Nobody makes breakfast as good as Wendy's new homestyle French toast sticks. Nobody. <clears throat> nope. Mm -mm. Keep talking. I'm, I, should, I, I can't I, hear you. I'm, I should probably stop. Choose wisely. Choose Wendy's homestyle French toast sticks. For those on the go, we give you Audibles with Jason Scarborough, the podcast. What are we listening to? Are we listening to a playlist? Are we listening to a podcast? What a great question. Listen to our intimate interviews with guests on your favorite podcast platforms, including iTunes, Google Play, Amazon Music, Spotify, TuneIn Radio, and so many more. Do you ever look back and say, you know, my life, the story could have ended up differently had it not been for your grandparents? In incredibly uh, different, yeah. for sure. Plus, you'll hear behind-the-scenes commentary on each guest, interview preparation, location, and so much more from Jason himself. Do you have a, uh, a favorite Coach Bowden story uh, that you can share with us? I can tell you this. What you see with Bobby Bowden is what you get. Mm. Check out Audibles with Jason Scarborough, the podcast, on any of these popular podcast locations and hit subscribe, download, and enjoy. Now, back to the show. The Virginia game, to me, in the College World Series that year, for you guys, I, I feel like that was... That was the game I felt like once you guys got past Virginia, for, for me watching it, I feel like once you guys got past Virginia, I'm like, they're, they're going to win it. So going back to that game, you guys fall behind 4 nothing. get to the seventh inning. You hadn't even had a hit till the seventh inning. Things start picking up. You guys cut the lead to two runs. You've got Rowdy on base, uh, Josh Hatcher. We were talking about that before the interview. You come up to bat. They change pitchers. They take out their starter and bring in a reliever before you come up to bat. And I've heard you say you said a prayer before that at bat. Yeah, it was kind of – it was neat, man. It was like – it was along the lines that I was kind of standing there while Steven was getting loose. 
And I, I can tell – we can talk about him all day, man. He, I've known him for a while. I knew I played with him. He's an awesome guy, really good closer, really good. Dippin' Dots guy. Yeah, Dippin' Dots guy. Yeah. Dippin' Dots guy. I'm talking like outstanding closer. Let's put it like this. The one time I get him was obviously on the biggest stage, but if he fa I face him ten times, he probably gets me seven out of eight, eight out of ten times, right? That's just the truth. But, yeah, man, so I was on deck, and it was all these people on their feet, maroon and white's going crazy, hearts beat out of my chest, and I kind of prayed. I was like, you know, something along the lines of, God, whether I succeed or not, I just want you to know I'm thankful for the ability you've given me, and I'm thankful that you've allowed me to be in this moment. Something along with that, just real simple. You know what I mean? And in a way, it took – all the pressure off of me because thinking that and I always thinking big moments you know what this is a game of failure if I fail that's what I'm supposed to do and that frees me up so much the fear of failure I mean why would I be scared of failure when in a game if I succeed three out of ten times I'm an all-american you know what I mean so they took all the pressure off of me talked to coach Gotro a little bit we're kind of go over some things I kind of told him I'm like look man I know he's not gonna throw me a fastball with a base open so I'm gonna, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to look all speed, get in the box. He throws me a first slider that's like in the other batter's box, way off the plate. And in my mind, I stepped out. I was like, that wasn't even competitive. Like, he's definitely coming back with it. That wasn't even a good one. And then he hung it. I hit the ball. I didn't even get it that good. I clipped it just a little bit, but I backspun it. So it, I knew I knew it was going. And uh, I really don't remember going around the bases. Really. The only thing I do remember is getting to the dugout. Celebrating, and out the corner of my eye, I see the number 23 sprinting to the bullpen. Landon Sims going to get hot because we, we were ready to go. We were going to bring Landon in and close the game out. I feel like that moment, it was like this, we were building up to that moment. And it was like everyone was waiting on what's going to be the, the, the punch, the uppercut. You were the uppercut, I feel like, in that Virginia game. And I feel like after that, you mentioned Landon going to get warm. You guys never look back never after looked. that. You face Vandy in the championship series. Um, really in that final game, that rubber match, I mean, talking to Jim Ellis, he's like, I was trying to keep it interesting. I mean, this is a championship moment. You guys jump on Vandy early, never look back, 9 nothing, And I got to wonder, what's going through your mind when you see the final out recorded when you guys win the national championship? What, what's going through your head at that moment? It was like the last inning, especially, we get the first two outs. I'm like, wow, we need one more out to finally get on top of that mountain. Been there. I, uh, instantly came to my mind was I've been here two years in a row, and it's been so close. We are the closest we're ever going to get right here. And then the guys laid the bunt down, and we threw him out. I'm, he was safe by 10 feet, but another fire called him out. And uh, instantly to my mind, like, we finally did it. You know what I mean? And then seeing, like, Dog piling and seeing people crying in the stands and like hugging people, like it, it was the best feeling. Not as an individual, like happiness, it was the happiness of knowing that we have brought happiness to everybody who supported us. You know what I mean? Now clearly, it was a, it was. I was happy for our guys because we had went, like I said, every year we go through hell to get ready, and to see it finally pay off, that was that's priceless. And to see what it meant to these people of Star Bowl and in that stadium at that time, it was priceless was watching on the field that night, you know, running around with the trophy and everything. And <clears throat> they panned over to Ron Polk in the stands. And I, I call him one of the godfathers of yeah. SEC baseball. And I've said this, and, and some will debate it. I, I don't know why. I feel like Mississippi State, they don't win that national championship in 2021 without – the foundation that Ron Polk laid years and years. Do you agree with that? 100%. Coach Polk started this whole thing, mm -hmm. right? Everybody who's worn the maroon and white was a part of that night. Yeah. Everybody. Because they all played us a role and somehow built us into that team that won the national championship that night. That was for everybody. That was for everybody. Is there a former player that contacted you, texted you, called you, a former Mississippi State player? Rafael Palmero. Did he contact you? Yeah. So, we I talked to Palme Palmero all throughout the year, just about stuff. You know, we talk a little bit. He'd come watch. We talk. He, me and Rowdy. He, man, we could talk baseball all day with that guy, right? After we won, we the bus got back to the hotel, and there's thousands of people out there, right? And there's a little lane that we were supposed to walk through to into our hotel, and it was probably 
about as wide as this table. And I got about halfway through and Palmy, Palmero, picks me up and bear hugs me out of nowhere. Just, wow. just picks me up screaming, you, we did it, we did it, we did it. It hit me right then and there. I'm like, wow, this, this means a lot to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? For him, I mean, especially with the legendary career he had here. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that was really, really neat. I got off the, uh, right after we won, I went to go do media. I was in a waiting room for media. Coach Corbin and all of them came out, talked to them. And then the lady goes, hold on, Dak Prescott wants to come see you. So Dak gets off the elevator, same kind of thing, like full on like form tackles me almost. Screaming, You're, you guys are legends, you guys are legends. This is awesome, like so happy. And to see how much it impacted him as well. I mean, that was, that was something special for me. When you hear that word legend, because that team will go down as, as legendary. When someone wants to say to you about you and, and Rowdy, because people identify that, uh, you guys, immediately as they'll talk about you, you and Rowdy first, typically with, with that national championship team, because you guys were so intertwined and you'd, you'd been through the battles. You'd already been there, done that, finally got that championship trophy. How do you deal with the word legend? Man, for me, it's more like the whole, like you said, the whole team, that, that whole team is gonna be legendary because everybody played a role. You know what I mean? Uh, I did my best to play my role. Rowdy did his best to play his role. I don't care how good you think both of us are, we cannot close the game out like Landon Sams can, right? We can't start a game like Will Bednar can. So everybody played a role. Coaches, we couldn't, I mean, organize practice, get lineups ready, manage a game. We couldn't do all that stuff without them. You know what I mean? I mean, it, it, it breaks it down all the way to everybody a part of that office over there, everything they do. So when they recognize me and Rowdy, the first thing I say is, you know, I really appreciate that. That's really cool. But I'm going to tell you right now, me and him could have done, done it without the guys behind us. I tell people all the time, you know, I had a really good year of baseball uh, hitting-wise. If I didn't have somebody behind me that could really hit, they would have never pitched to me. I wouldn't have had that opportunity. So that's as much kudos to the guy behind me as, as it is to me. Don't go anywhere. Audible's returns in a moment here on the Spirit Media Network. When you find a great community, you will find great health care. That is exactly what King's Daughters Medical Center provides. Keeping businesses moving with occupational wellness, heart healthy screenings, diabetes education and management, community education, and remote patient monitoring that promotes better care in between regular office visits. KDMC, caring for our community like no one else can. We're going the extra mile, and we're taking you with us. We have a responsibility to get the work to the streets. Join us on the Extra Mile podcast as we travel Mississippi highways to bring you in-depth conversations with state leaders. Got to have the ability to get their product to market. Infrastructure stakeholders and Mississippi locals to give you a behind-the-scenes look at transportation throughout the state. Highways, um, movement of goods, these are things that we rely on every day. You can listen and watch episodes of the show by visiting goemdot.com forward slash the extra mile. For those on the go, we give you Audibles with Jason Scarborough, the podcast. What are we listening to? Are we listening to a playlist? Are we listening to a podcast? What a great question. Listen to our intimate interviews with guests on your favorite podcast platforms, including iTunes, Google Play, Amazon Music, Spotify, TuneIn Radio, and so many more. Do you ever look back and say, you know, my life, the story could have ended up differently had it not been for your grandparents? In incredibly uh, different, yeah. for sure. Plus, you'll hear behind-the-scenes commentary on each guest, interview preparation, location, and so much more from Jason himself. Do you have a, uh, a favorite Coach Bowden story uh, that you can share with us? I can tell you this. What you see with Bobby Bowden is what you get. Mm. Check out Audibles with Jason Scarborough, the podcast, on any of these popular podcast locations and hit subscribe, download, and enjoy. Now, back to the show. During your career, what was so interesting about watching you guys in the College World Series, too, you were always you seemed so calm. You always seemed so laid back, just like, hey, this is, I'm playing the game I love. You talked about hitting those rocks when you were a kid, you know. I mean, it, it seemed like that's how you approached every at-bat. You were just 
pretty laid back and, and, and loose. Is that yeah. – how do you stay so loose in those moments? Like I said, man, it's – you're playing a game full of failure, so why worry about the failure? Why, why be scared of it? Embrace it, man. You're going to fail. Everybody's going to fail. Alex Rodriguez, Chipper Jones, Derek Dude, all those guys, they have failed, mm -hmm. right? So why am I going to stress out about or be so uptight and scared of failure? Mm -hmm. That's why I play so loose and so relaxed. People don't know this, man. When I'm up there, I'm up there at the plate hitting. I'm talking to the umpire and the catcher the whole time. I talk to the catcher a lot just to try to get in his head a little bit. But the umpire, it, just being able to talk like that relaxes me. Relax. Relax. <laughs> <laughs> and you'd be surprised when you get freed up how what you can do. Here's your career in Starkville in a nutshell. And, I, and people love when I do this. Three-time All-American, Team USA baseball alum, the National Player of the Year in 2021, the SEC, SEC Player of the Year in 2021, SEC batting title, three-time All-SEC team, three trips to the College World Series, 2021 National Channel. Going back to the kid hitting rocks, yep. growing up there at Theodore, Alabama. You hear all that now. But what comes to your mind? God has blessed me tremendously throughout my career, tremendously. And I've always tried to, I've tried to follow one aspect that, I, that he wrote about in the book of Matthew, and it is those who exalt themselves will be humbled, but those who are humbled will be exalted. And that is one thing that I really try to help the kids that I work with you give lessons to an all season. I try to tell them, like, listen to me. Everybody loves a humble hero. Be a good teammate and always give credit to those around you and be thankful. Because, man, he has blessed me so much throughout my career. Like, like that list of accolades you just rattled off. Man, without, without God in my career and in my life, none of that would have been possible. I'm just being honest with you. I give him all the credit. It says in the Bible, all good things and all blessings come from above. And those right there, every one of those was some kind of blessing in my career. And so... I believe they all come from above, and that's I give him all the credit for my career. You must have been looking over here because my next question was to ask you about your faith because you're very open about it. Yeah. Uh, you're very open about it, uh, outspoken in a lot of ways, and I think that's uh, that's very cool that uh, someone your, your age is so outspoken, so so successful, yeah. and so outspoken about their faith. Yeah, man. So for me, it's like I said, I'm not perfect by any means. Sure. Nobody is. There was only one person who's ever walked this earth that was perfect, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not perfect by any means, but I do my best, right? I do my best. And um, the way I was raised when I was younger, always in church, always, you know, going to church Monday, Wednesday, even Wednesday nights, doing all kinds of stuff, right? And I try to give back in a way of, you know, trying to spread my wisdom that my dad taught me through my career for these young kids that I work with. And I believe that aspect of, of, like I said, those who exalt themselves will be humbled, but those who are humble will be exalted. That aspect, let alone right now in sports, is completely backwards, mm -hmm. right? Because every, every time you watch somebody on TV, it's all about, look, Coach, Coach Polk, he's got this phrase called LAM, L-A-M, look at me. And uh, he always used to rag me, rag me about it with my mohawk. Oh, that's just lamb. I'm like, no, that's got meaning. But, uh, but yeah, it's all about me. That's why you, there's all kind of – Sports are dramatic nowadays, right? There's no team – like, I believe college baseball, college football are so cool because there's, like, one team working together for one goal. Mm -hmm. And uh, that, that, to me, right there is, is what it's all about. So what are you – people are going to ask, so what are you up to now? When you leave, get done in Starkville, what's next for Tanner Allen? So yeah, man. Like so I'm with the Marlins right now playing uh, minor league baseball, hopefully. Uh, one, one day accomplish the dream of having an opportunity to play pre professional baseball in the big leagues. But uh, other than that, man, I've started this online hitting course, like I, I was telling, talking about earlier. I'm trying to help every kid in America or throughout the world that wants an opportunity to experience what I experience. I'm giving back by giving them the foundation and the steps to do what I did. I've seen a couple of videos. They're pretty good. Yeah, man, I've, I've got everything. Like I said, right now I'm just starting it off as a hitting course because I want to be able to focus on hitting only. I've got so many different things, this can, so many different ways this thing can branch out into, into how to get recruited, how to get looked at, how to handle a college visit, what to expect your freshman year going into college, just stuff like that, you know what I mean? And even for the younger guys, where should I play? You know, what, what kind of travel ball should I do? Who should I talk to? Who should I play with? Just, just all kind of things, you know. Like I said, my main goal is, I told my dad the other day, 
when I was playing and I noticed, you know, when I got drafted, uh, the next year of college baseball, I still see, you know, players out there wearing the high pants. And I see young kids running around with mohawks. I'm like, at one time, these kids looked up to me and thought I was the coolest thing around, right? What, is, what can I do to help them to one day impact the next generation coming up? So my way of doing that was creating this online course to train them how to be or how to play the way I played throughout my college career and into my professional career. This was a question that was submitted to me, and I'm like, this is a pretty good question. I didn't come up with this one. If there was a movie made about the 2021 Mississippi State Bulldogs, the national championship run, who would play Tanner Allen? Uh, Brad Pitt. Really? Yeah. I like it. Brad Pitt's good, man. Okay, who's going to play Rowdy Jordan? Rowdy Jordan. Uh, <laughs> Adam Sandler. <laughs> Rowdy's a jokester, man, but he'll get after it. He's, he's, him and Brad Cummins right there, those two guys bring energy to practice every single day, right? I love it, Sandler. I love it. Yeah. What about Coach, Coach, Coach Lamonis? Coach Lim, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go Denzel Washington. Denzel. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Denzel's my favorite actor. Yeah, Denzel's good, man. Yeah. So my final question for you: You've accomplished so much right here in Star Bowl. You'll be remembered forever. I'd be shocked if you ever had to pay for another meal here in Star Bowl. How do you want to be remembered personally? I want to be remembered as the guy that everybody watched accomplish everything he wanted to accomplish, but. He did his best to give back to the people that supported him and helped him along the way in the way of helping the younger generation of baseball players know what they need to do to accomplish the things that I accomplished so their families can have the same experiences that my family had of going to Omaha, winning a national championship, playing Division I baseball, SEC. If I could, if I could have just a little speck of, I guess, if I could play a role, a little bitty tiny role in some kid's career, it would mean the world to me to see them have success. And if I can impact all the players I can that way, man, that's what I want to be remembered as. Is it cool to be the national champion, the SEC player of the year, national champion, or national player of the year? Of course it is. But I grew up and I was raised the way of those who help me, I want to do anything I can to help them. And, and like I said, that, that's what I want to do. That's what I want to do. I've wanted to do this interview for a long time. And <clears throat> I enjoyed watching you play. I really enjoyed watching you play. One of my favorite SEC players to watch play. And uh, just enjoyed your style, enjoyed how outspoken you were about your faith. And uh, I hope we get to do part two of this down the road. Yeah. And uh, man, I've enjoyed it. And I appreciate you taking some time with us to do this. Man, I, I love doing it, man. I appreciate it. I had a blast. I had a blast. Yeah, still the 10, yeah, just 10, 20, 30, 40. When I get to 42, just, you know, you do the 4 2. So. Yeah, 4 1, that'd be good. Yeah, yeah. That's a wrap, guys. Dude. Man, I could have done two parts on that, man. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week for another episode of Audibles with Jason Scarborough.